We've been in Villa Hayosa for about three or four days now, and what a place it is. The locals call it La Vila, which literally means joyful town. We're on the Costa Blanca between Alicante and Benidorm, and Villa Hayosa is famous for three things. It's brightly coloured buildings, it's white sandy beaches, and it's chocolate. More about that later. Villa Hayosa has got over three kilometres of sandy beaches, said to be some of the best on the Costa Blanca. It's also got long established links with the maritime industry. Behind me here is the Carrere Arsenal, where they used to build warships. And just over there is La Fonda, where there was a port between the 7th century to 1936, where both passengers and um, trade were disembarked there and shipped onto the land. This is my favourite piece of street art in Villa Hayosa, the tattooed sailor. You just look in his hat, you can see the James Bond window. Remember the James Bond film? Where the uh, assassin was climbing out the window and James Bond took the shot. That's quite significant. I took some pictures here in black and white. See what you think. And this is my second favourite piece of street art. And since we were here last, it's been uh, done up and repainted. Now this bit has remained, it's just been touched up, which is the fisherman sat doing his nets. Now this bit is new. Children playing marbles. Obviously then there's the mural of the coloured cottages as we walk along. Put some images up of what it looked like last year, just so you know. There's a bird down there, I'm quite sure what you're doing. Hey bird, you don't seem to be frightened, do you? Well, it's very well, isn't it? But, uh, keep, Helen's keeping Poppy away. So that's it. Villa Hayosa has got a rich and varied history and it seems entirely appropriate that I'm telling you about it on the site of the old castle. The Phoenicians have been here, the Greeks, the Romans. There are tales of pirates, marauding Moors landing on the beaches and being fought back by the local Los Cristianos with the help of the local patron saint, Santa Marta. The Phoenicians came here in 800 BC and set up and established trade routes. They were followed by the Greeks. And in the 8th century BC, the Romans came here. What have the Romans ever done for us? Well, they did quite a lot for Villa Hayosa. They set up a military base for over 500 soldiers. They built roads that linked the trade routes to Alicante. They also set up villas and the Roman baths. The town as you see it today was established in 1293 by an admiral from the Kingdom of Aragon Navy and it became a really important trading port for things like olive oil, wine, cereals and cocoa from Venezuela and Ecuador. And in more recent history, it was a Republican stronghold in the Spanish Civil War. What's fantastic when you're walking around here is you're picking up Spanish radio in the houses and the traditional music. And I could sit and listen to it all day, it's marvellous. That's a bread delivery. Five baguettes hung on the on the on the doorknob. This building coming up is with the flags. It's actually the town hall, where you can get everything from births, deaths, marriage certificates, permission for building, you name it. This is the building. Quite a lot of evolved local administration, a bit like in France, I guess, but uh, seems to work quite well here. I don't think they're massive on regulation, though, to be fair. The last time we were here, we were on our Camino de Santiago route we were following the way of the pilgrims. Well, behind us here was the local hospital, 
that was set up for the pilgrims that wanted to start the Camino when they landed here. And if they needed any hospital treatment, this was set up for them. It's now a youth hostel. So not a bad place to stop for lunch? Oh, they're worse places, aren't they, really? Mm. Some shine, nice glass of beer, nice view, beautiful. Lovely beaches, aren't they? Oh, gorgeous. The sand is literally white. I know it's why it's called the Costa Blanca, but it is beautiful, absolutely stunning. We're engaging in a very Spanish pastime at the moment called the Paseo. The Paseo, yes. Which is? It's where the Spanish, um, either in the morning, um, in an evening, walk up and down the promenade to get their daily exercise. Yeah. Works for us. Works for us. This is the port of Santa Marta. It used to be the Royal Shipbuilders. And this place here has built some of the biggest schooners and pilot boats for the whole of Spain. Still used today, and it's still got its close links with the fishing net and rope industry, which in its heyday used to employ over 400 families. Is the old castle wall. Esta vez sentía que era eterno. Tus besos fríos como el invierno. Lo sé. Pero tal vez estás con otro que no te this is what we get up for. And the good thing about Spain is that sunrise is at seven, so it's not too bad. See, back in the UK, we have to get up an hour earlier. This is fantastic. There's a fishing boat out there. It's dragging its nets quite uh, inshore. And this is the city waking up or the town, should I say. The town, the joy town, Villa Hayosa. What a place. A bit of nice cloud over there. Another boat going out. We're starting to get a red sky. We're just waiting to see what happens over there. The whole purpose here is to get a shot along what used to be the old rampway where boats used to dock in ancient times or medieval times, should I say. Helen referred to earlier on in the video. Here we go. Right, you can just see some red now permeating up into the clouds. It might just give us something this morning. We're always hopeful. Well, you can pick it out, but the red is reflecting all through that on the edges of that cloud base now. It's starting to look stunning. There she is. Sunrise. Just hoping into view. Beautiful, as always. Well, that's the sunrise. And we've just heard about this market that owns about half past seven. It's supposed to be a traditional Spanish market. Um, maybe get a coffee there, etc. So we're going to head that way and check it out. And uh, Helen and Poppy are on the beach somewhere. So, or at least the beach head. Dogs aren't allowed on the beach here, sadly. But uh, we're on the promenade in the beach head area. So I'll go and find her, get a coffee, and hopefully we'll get some uh, get a bit of sustenance. Been quite a morning so far. This place behind me is the local indoor Spanish market. It's a wonderful place. It's got all kinds of fresh food and vegetables and amazing the size of the vegetables. Impressive. And there's a cafe outside. And later on in the day, you can buy stuff in the market, bring it to the bar and cafe at the front. And they'll cook it for you while you have a beer. It's, uh, it's quite an incredible thing. It's a very Spanish thing, but it's really good. And uh, we've enjoyed it very much this morning. Poppy. After an early start, 
it's only right that we have coffee and tostada. It's look quite nice. Very nice. I always wondered when you walked around Villa Hayosa why you could smell chocolate. Now I know why. It's the home of the Valor chocolate factory. So if you've ever been into a Spanish supermarket, um, you've probably seen um, the chocolate that's manufactured here in Villa Hayosa. And I'm just about to go on the tour. Apparently, it's not chocolate I can smell when I'm walking round. It's when they're roasting the cocoa. I would imagine it's difficult to keep pace with the amount of chocolate that people want nowadays mm -hmm. because it just tastes fantastic. I love how it's altered. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That was a fantastic tour of the Valor Chocolate Factory and Museum. It's definitely, I'm eating some chocolate, it's definitely the most um, aromatic tour I've ever been because they are roasting the cocoa and it smells fantastic. And when you come through into the packaging area, it smells of cherries, it smells of almonds, it's wonderful. So it's completely free. They do two tours in English, the first one in the morning and the first one in an afternoon. So if you find yourself in Via Hayosa, as I've now been uh, taught is how it's said, then come and check this out because it's definitely worth it. And like every good tour, it always finishes in the shop where you can buy just about every type of chocolate you've seen in production. And you also get a few free samples as well. Ooh, look at these. 